Thank you, LE2M. Uh, I'm Jim Musio. I'm uh, subbing today for Derek Marabon, who is over at uh, TEDx Grand Rapids. So, uh, you know, hopefully uh, Derek will be back next week, and uh, we'll be happy to see him. But wanted to welcome everybody. I know we got at least one first timer. Is there any other first timers here today for LE2M? We got a couple here. So, so great. Thank you. I'm glad you're here today, and uh, and we welcome you. Uh, Surprise! It's a, it's a light thing. I don't know if the weather scared everybody away this morning, or or the sun came out and like everybody ran to go do things today. I don't know. But um, a couple things just want to bring up. Uh, first of all, a little bit about LA2M. Uh, we're here every Wednesday at Connor O'Neill's. Uh, we have a great speaker every week, and we'll introduce today's speaker in a few minutes. Uh, but LA2M is a nonprofit organization. We support and promote marketing. Uh, you'll be great people here that are all in the marketing field. So, but we're a nonprofit, and because of that, we don't have, uh, we don't charge for, for you to attend this event. It's a free event to attend. We do pass the hat, so we're, we're kind of old school. And up here with me is Stacy Collick from Dollar Bill Copy, and she is the treasurer for LA2M. And we've got a bucket that we pass around. We ask you to throw a few bucks in there if you're able to. If you can throw a $5 bill in there, that'd be great. Um, if you're not able to today, that's okay. Maybe next week you can. Certainly, if you have a 10 or 20, we'd always be happy to take that as well. But if you throw a few bucks in there, we'd appreciate it. That helps defray some of our costs. We do have a full-time employee. Mary Lou holds up here in the front. She is uh, the LA Twin manager and kind of helps us get everything organized and arranges all the speakers and make sure everything runs smoothly. So uh, we couldn't do all these events without her. So we do have to pay her every week. So that helps us. Um, so a couple of things. I got my little cheat sheet here. Um, so, because uh, because again we're LA2M and we're nonprofits, we also use sponsors every week. Uh, so each month we have a sponsor, and this month's sponsor is the Ann Magazine. And I don't know, I didn't see anybody from the Ann here yet. Um, and if she shows up, maybe we'll uh, we'll catch her at the end. But uh, the Ann Magazine is uh, is a, is a, has been coming here for a while. They're a publication that goes into uh, local newspapers and the, the New York Times. Really cool magazine if you haven't seen it. Um, I'm sure she will be here in subsequent weeks if she doesn't make it today, so we'll hear about that. But we appreciate the Ann uh, for May sponsorship. And uh, do we have any more room for sponsorship for this year, or are we sold out? Um, November. We could still use a, a November sponsor. Oh, so for the summer, too. And for the summer. So um, if you are interested, if you or your company is interested, it's $250 for a sponsorship. Uh, it gets your name. You get to speak each week for a few minutes. Um, you get put into the newsletter that goes out to about 1,800 people. Um, so it's a really good opportunity to expose your company. If you are interested, we have some little sheets that are on the tables and on the back sponsorship table. If you'd be interested, fill that out. Give that to myself or Stacy or Mary Lou, and we'll make sure that your company gets contacted by us. So um, the other thing we'd ask you to do is, is to share LA2M. Uh, again, we do well when we have a lot of people here and we have a good turnout. So again, we have these little cards that are on the tables. Take them with you. They're about a little bigger than a business card. But uh, if you enjoyed today's uh, session and you've been here before, the best thing we can do is grow LA2M by promoting it. So share it with your colleagues, your friends, other people that are involved in marketing. We'd love to see them here. Uh, it's great when this room is packed and we always have a great time. So. Um, let's see, with that, uh, so format for the new people, uh, we have a speaker here who's going to speak for about 30, 35 minutes, and then we'll have some time for, for Q&A at the end, and then after that, we pass the microphone around, and everybody gets the opportunity to stand up, introduce themselves, if you have a quick ask or a want or need, you can share that with the group, so it's a great opportunity. You don't have to, if you don't want to talk to the microphone, you can pass it along if you're new and kind of like a wallflower like I was when I first started coming here, um, but you'll, you'll learn quickly, you'll meet a lot of people. And it's really a good opportunity for you to expose a little bit about who you are and maybe if you want to meet some other contacts here. It's a great opportunity for that. We'll do that at the end. Um, also, um, the Bank of Ann Arbor has, is another longtime sponsor and sponsors our t-shirts. And each week we present our speaker with a t-shirt. So I'm going to let Stacy get in here oh, right. and let our speaker get his t-shirt. We we'll take a photo op. You got it? So again, so today LA2M, great speaker here, and I want to take this opportunity to introduce our speaker. It's, uh, today we have Jacob Brown. Jacob is the director of interactive media for PCG Campbell in Dearborn, 
And uh, if you didn't notice him standing next to me, he's a little larger than most of us here because Jacob played in the NFL and he played for the Oakland Raiders and uh, has a lot to share about competition moving from the NFL into the marketing world, into specifically the digital marketing world. So, so, uh, so Jacob's going to talk about that today, like I said, for about 30, 35 minutes, and then we'll have some time for questions. So if you'd help me, welcome Jacob to LA2M. Good I'm not sure if this is on. I hope it's yes. everyone can hear me. Yeah. You guys hear me in the back? Yeah. All right. Uh, well, you know what? Uh, a couple months ago when Derek, Mary Lou contacted me and asked me if I'd come be a guest speaker uh, for the LA2M, I was very excited. You know, I said, this is this is what an honor to, to be able to come and speak in front of marketing professionals from the Metro Detroit area that are just like me and aspiring uh, marketing professionals. And then a couple weeks later, it hit me and I said, oh crap, I've got to speak in front of marketing professionals. <laughs> and uh, you, you know, it, it's it, I've done many seminars, but you know, it's, you always get that, that nervous itch before you go. and. Uh, I used to have that when I before I stepped on the football field, and it's kind of a, exciting, and then it's kind of a little scary. But uh, I guess they say a healthy fear is, is good. So, uh, just a little bit about myself. First of all, who is Jacob Brown? Uh, who is Jacob Brown? And I ask myself that a lot. You know, who is Jacob Brown? And some of my football coaches used to tell us to go look in the mirror and, and look at yourself and, and ask yourself who you are and what you want to do and what you want to be. Uh, I'm. Like, like uh, Jim said, I'm the director of interactive media for PCG Campbell uh, right here in Dearborn. Um, we're not too far from here. Uh, PCG Campbell is a marketing and a PR uh, agency um, here in Dearborn, and, and we work on various projects, various industries. Um, and I had about a, a team of about five, uh, anywhere from five to eight uh, developers, designers, um, and marketing professionals as well on different projects. Uh, and, uh, and I really enjoy what I do, uh, and I really enjoy my team as well. Where am I from? Anywhere know where Bridgeport, Michigan is? One person knows where Bridgeport, we get two, three? Three people know where Bridgeport, Michigan is, the Michigan thing. Right by Frank and Move. Now, it's funny you say Frank and Move because I actually Low Frankenmuth. Uh, <laughs> Bridgeport is five minutes from Frankenmuth. Uh, I know everyone knows where Frankenmuth is. Frankenmuth was my high school rival. Um, I personally beat them one time in football, and uh, they really uh, have a, a, a spear in my side. But uh, Frankenmuth is a beautiful city. Bridgeport, small, small town. Small, small town. Like I said, it's about 7,800 people total in the whole town. Um, if you've ever driven through Bridgeport, Bridgeport, I know you have, you probably recognize Freeway Fritz. Freeway Fritz is from, Frankenmuth is a Frankenmuth uh, owned company. Uh, it's basically a, a stop shop. Um, it was a food restaurant. It's no longer there anymore, a gas station as well. Um, the other thing you might recognize is the large travel center that we have there, the truck stop. I remember growing up that we, we stopped there after church and go have dinner at the church at the truck stop. It was kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel is one of my favorite restaurants. It's one of the stops in Michigan that has Cracker Barrel. Now, you might say, why should you care? Why should you care where I'm from? Why should you care? Uh, you should, or should you? That's one thing that I'm gonna talk about today is what's going on with SEO and how I came from the NFL. My family made history in Bridgeport. Bridgeport is one of the smallest towns in Michigan. 7,800 people, like I said, and we are the only, my, me and my brother and my uncle are the only three athletes to ever make it to the NFL from this small town. Now, there have been several that have made it from Saginaw, but only three from this small town, and we're all in the same family. Like I said, myself, played at Central Michigan, along with my little brother, Isaac Brown, he's now a strength coach at the University of Tennessee. He's in his second year as a strength coach. He played a year with the Atlanta Falcons. Then he played three years with the Hamilton Ticats in Canada. Had a successful career. And then my uncle Monty. I'm not sure if anyone knows who Monty Brown is. He's from Bridgeport, uh, right here. He's in his wrestling gear. He wrestled for the WWE for the end of his career. He played for the Buffalo Bills uh, from 1994 to 1996. Then he played for the New England Patriots, 97, 98. 
went to two Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. Two Super Bowls. I'd say that's pretty successful for a small town, Bridgeport. After that, Monty wrestled in, uh, in WWE. He wrestled right here in, uh, in Dearborn um, for WrestleMania not too long ago. I'd say these guys are pretty successful. Pretty, pretty successful. They're all three have made it to the NFL from a small town that hardly anyone comes out of. Small town named Bridgeport. But there, I have a small disappointment for you. My brother Isaac actually played in a few games in the NFL. My Uncle Monty played in two Super Bowls. Myself, I never played a game. Never played a game. In my eyes, I was a failure. <laughs> I didn't make it to the Oakland Raiders. Okay, I played in three days of minicamp. I put on an Oakland Raiders helmet. My number was 19, I swear. I was there with Randy Moss, Warren Sapp, Art Shells, the coach. It was the funnest time that I've ever had, the funnest three days I've ever had. And that moment, I said, oh my gosh, I'm from this small town. I barely made it to college on a scholarship to Central Michigan, and I made it to the NFL. How did I get here? I'm thinking in my head, I've made it. I've made it. We leave minicamp, I never get a call back. Never get a call back. Not too shortly after, I call my agent. I say, what's going on, you know? How come I'm not getting the call back? And he says, well, I don't know. I'll call you, I'll call you a little later. He never called me back. A lot of bad business happens in the NFL. A lot of backstabbing happens in the NFL. It's all business. No one's your friend. A little later, I had a workout with the Chicago Rush. Great workout. I fired that old agent, got a new agent. Great workout. They said, hey, we're going to sign you. They called my old agent. I never got signed. Strike two. Third strike. My new agent got me a workout with the Pittsburgh Steelers. It was the same day that Bill Cowher retired. They said, don't worry. You had a great workout. Everything's fine. We're going to sign you. I get a call from Mike Tomlin, the head coach. Says, sorry, we're not going to be able to sign you. Strike three. It took a whole year of disappointment for me to finally say, okay, I'm done with football. I am done with football. But failure is not always bad. Failure is not always bad. One thing that we learn in football, one thing that we learn in life is that we're gonna fail. We're gonna fail. And I could have kept trying, I could have kept trying, but I had to wake up and say, you know what? Maybe it's time to get a real job and start working. Why is failure good? Failure helps you reach your potential. Not only your potential, but your maximum potential. You'll never know how good you can be until you fail. You'll never know how good you can be until you fail. Because otherwise you might sink into a stalemate and think you've made it when you actually really have it. Michael Jordan said it best. He said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted with a game-winning shot and I've missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. I watched several Michael Jordan basketball games. I can't remember one game winner that he did not make. I can't remember it. I don't remember him missing several shots. But he did, and that's why he's the best play basketball player to probably ever touch a basketball court. Failure gives a new way to look at life. You know, when I was in high school, I was the man. When I went to college, I was the man. Then I went to the NFL, and there were 103 men. And I was just number 19. And that's when reality hit. And it's the same thing. We might be in high school, we might be good at, in school when we're in high school, we might be good in school when we're in college, but once we get in the real world, especially of marketing, you realize that there are other people that are just as good as you, if not better. New way to look at life. Thomas Edison, 
He said, I have not failed. This is how he looks at it. I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. 10,000 ways that won't work. How many know some of the inventions that Thomas Edison has made? He made the light bulb, the motion camera, the telephone. How many are happy Thomas Edison failed? <laughs> and didn't stop. We probably wouldn't have these if Thomas Edison stopped failing. If he stopped failing. One of my favorite, one of my favorites. Failure makes you feel fear less. Failure makes you fearless. I've failed many times in my life. In football, in life, in my career. But one thing that I've always failed is I failed up. One thing that our coach used to, used to tell us is, if you're ever gonna fall, if you're running the ball and you're gonna fall, he always says fall forward. Fall forward, never fall back. So if you're gonna fail, fail going 100 miles an hour. My coach used to tell me, Jacob, I don't care if you drop the ball, drop the pass, miss the block. He said, if you're going 100 miles an hour, I can't argue with that. At least you're giving effort. Mark Zuckerberg, he says, the, big, the biggest risks is not taking any risk. In a world that is changing quickly, the only strategy that is guaranteed to fail is not taking risks is not taking risks. There were several times where, after I got cut from a football team, that I just said, I'm done with it. And then I might have, I had some few friends say, no, Jake, you still got it. I, I'm 30 years old, I'll be 31 in June. I got a few, few of my friends that say, you should try for the Lions. I said, my knees hurt. <laughs> I'm not gonna try out anymore. But then, if, if I didn't take those risks, I would have never known how far I could have made it. I would have always regretted it. I know there are a few things that some of you in here might say, I wish I did this, or I wish I tried that. I made a promise to myself that I was going to at least try, even if the risk is there. Even if the risk is there. I've started many startups, many startups. I can go down the line of different startups I've started. I started a company called Noise.com a few years ago. I think it was 2007. Anyone heard of Noise? K-N-O-Y-C-E.com. Look it up. It's still up. You'll, you'll probably laugh. It was when the big boom was happening with Facebook where kids' parents were starting to get on Facebook. And a lot of kids were dropping off Facebook. So I said, what can I do to help this world? I can be the next Mark Zuckerberg. So I created a social media platform called Noise. Now within Noise, it took about three months and I had 40,000 people using this social network in 109 different countries. Meanwhile, I'm working at Staples and a plant. And I'm not making that much money. And if anyone knows about hosting and servers, at that level of capacity, it costs a lot of money. I couldn't hold it. So I canceled the company. Canceled it. I started a company, Jacob Brown Designs, still up. Jacob Brown Designs. I said, I'm gonna be my own boss. I'm gonna build a web design company to be my own boss. I've had the company since 2003. I still work for someone. But I've learned. I've learned a lot. Working for different companies, being a consultant, being an entrepreneur, failing. I've learned a ton. I continue to take risks. I continue to fail. Yet I continue to take risks. I know some of you are sitting in your seat. Is this guy a motivational speaker? <laughs> some type of Joel Osteen or something? No, I'm not Joel Osteen. Obviously, because of the obvious, he's got hair. 
right? Joel seems a great speaker. I watch him sometimes, and he, he speaks great words of inspiration. And I'm not here to inspire you. I'm just here to tell you my story of my transition from NFL to SEO. So how does SEO relate to the NFL? How? Couple things. There's a draft in the NFL. I can remember the draft day. I was supposed to go fifth, sixth, seventh round. I had a really good pro day. And I ran faster than the NFL coaches thought I could. And I started to get some calls. And I said, I might get drafted. I wasn't supposed to get drafted. I said, I might get drafted. And I was so nervous. And during my pro day, the NFL coaches would come up to me and they, they asked me a series of questions because they wanted to hear how I would answer them. They wanted to know, how are you going to answer these questions? What type of brains does this kid have? Because we all know that there are some guys in the NFL that continue to get in trouble because they have no character. So I was going through an interview process just with the draft. And I would get very nervous. I hope I say and do the right things. And it's the exact same thing when I moved into the marketing field. I can remember my first web design job. I had already been building websites. My first web design job was for an industrial contractor up in Pontiac, Michigan. And they brought me in, they say, we already have a website. We want to know, can you do SEO? I said, yes, I can, obviously. I had no idea what SEO meant. Uh, zero. Zero idea. This was over eight years ago. So I had, I had no idea what SEO meant. So went home. They said, okay, can you show us some examples or can you come in and you know talk to us about SEO? Anyone did a had an all-nighter? <laughs> I'm not sure if anyone in the marketing world has not had an all-nighter. I sure had an all-nighter that night. I stayed up all night, and this is really funny, I'll tell you guys. I stayed up all night learning the basics about SEO. I said, I have to at least learn these things. I came across a video, and I'm not sure if anyone, is, is anyone in here like does SEO? You do SEO? How long have you been doing SEO? Not long. Not long? Get my card before you leave. I'll send you a video. Okay. I learned the basics of SEO from a rap. From a rap. I kid you not. There was this huge guy that was rapping about SEO and what you need to do in order to optimize a website. And the same things that he said eight years ago are still true today. Still true today. He said the most basic fundamentals of how to do SEO and why it's important. And that's how I learned. Now I didn't go in my interview and rap, but I did use some of those things that he said. What else? Competition. You guys will see on the left side, my right. Competition under NFL. And on the right, left side, competition under SEO. I learned with competition, it's the same, both sides. Now, who's your competition? Your number one competition is your own self. In football, my own competition was my own self. However hard I pushed myself, however hard I studied film, however hard I played in the game, I was my main competition and then my opponent. It's the same thing in the marketing world and in SEO. One thing that a lot of companies miss out on are pushing them own selves optimally. One thing that we have to always realize is that we have to optimize ourselves before we can even assess the competition. There's competition on both sides. <coughs> Opponents and other companies that might be selling the same product Selling the same services that you have, they're your competition. You're your competition. The playing field. 
the playing field. Obviously, the playing field is 100 yards long in football. The playing field in SEO are the search engines. You have to learn the playing field. There are some fields that are grass. There are some fields that are turf. And for the Raiders, there are some fields that are dirt. <laughs> Learning how to run. You have different shoes on, different types of cleats, different types of spikes, depending on what you're running on, what you're playing on. Knowing the search engine. Google, Yahoo, Bing, they're all different. They're the playing field. They're all different. They optimize differently. They search your site differently. Learning the playing field. Learn your field. Study your field. Get in your field. Search around. Play around. You ever wonder why players go out so early before the game and, and go run around and feel the field underneath their feet? They need to know what's underneath them. They need to know if it's squishy in some areas. When receivers make cuts, I play wide receiver. Everyone knows what a wide receiver is. I played wide receiver. I always went out. I ran straight up and down, then I made cuts left to right, then I planted my feet, see if the, the ground was soft enough or if it was too hard, so I know how to play. Same thing with search engines. I go around, I search different search engines, I see what type of results they show, I look at the cache to see what it's actually looking for. Playing field, same thing. The basics. The basics. Does anyone know the basics of football? They call them the fundamentals of football. What are the two fundamentals of football? Someone give it to me. Come on, I, I know you know. I'm not quite sure, I'm gonna let you answer that question. Two fundamentals of football. Blocking and tackling. Blocking and tackling. Blocking and tackling. When you're a little kid, this tall, it's the first thing they teach you. They teach you how to block, and teach you how to tackle. Then they teach you how to catch, then they teach you how to run, and they teach you how to listen. Five fundamentals, five basics. <clears throat> Blocking, tackling, running, catching, listen. Now I'll give you a cheat. Anyone got any little kids? Play football? Here's a cheat for you. Here's a sixth one, and yeah, I'm giving it to this for free. One of the things that they're gonna teach a kid is how to block, okay? I was a receiver, I had to block. I was a tight end my senior year, had to block. If you have your arms on the outside of the player, what are they gonna say? Holding. Holding. You have your hands on the inside, they don't say anything. They don't say anything. But if you extend your arms left or right, they'll call holding. So teach your little kids, when they're blocking, to grab on the inside, tight, and pull. They're still holding, but it's legal. <laughs> but it's legal. The basics in SEO, get your pins out. The basics in SEO, there are five basics. Five basics that every SEO expert, every marketing expert that works on a website should know should know. The three most important, I'll start with three. There were two in football, there's three in SEO. Number one, title tags. Anyone know what title tags are? Anyone? Title tags? Title tags are the keywords or the title of each page that are in your browser. So if you go to a website, you go to a certain page, that title tag usually changes. For those that don't optimize their website, it might say home, about us, contact page, login. But for those that do optimize, it has keywords and keyword phrases. Does anyone know what a long tail keyword phrase is? Long tail keyword phrase? When someone goes to search for a solution, let's just say they're searching for apples. Okay? You're searching for apples and you're in Ann Arbor. What would you most likely type? Thank you. Apples in Ann Arbor. Some people go to Google and they type apples. 
and then they might narrow it down a little longer. And then there might be three to four words, keywords that they use to find specifically what they're looking for. When you have three or more keywords, those are called long tail keywords. Remember that, okay? Title tags, number one. Number two, the URL. The URL is the second most important thing that you're going to want to focus on. And I'll come back to that. Number three. Can anyone tell me number three? Description. The description. Okay? The description for the page. The title for the page. The, the URL for the page. Now notice what I'm saying. The page. Not the website, but the page. In SEO, we optimize websites by optimizing each individual page. That's what optimate optimization means. You're optimizing your website for specific services, specific products, solutions for each individual page. So say your company sells apples. They sell bananas. They sell oranges. Now I know this is pretty kindergarten, but it's this basic. Apples, oranges, and bananas. Each of those products that you sell should have their own page, should have their own title tag, should have their own URL, and description. Okay? Why are those three the most important? Why are those three the most important? When you're in a search, you're in a Google search, and you type apple seller in Ann Arbor, for each result, the first line that you see are the title tags for that page. The second is the URL. Now when I say the URL, I'm not meaning the actual URL for the website. So your website could be johnsapples.com, okay? But for your actual URL, for the Apple product, it should be johnsapples.com forward slash apples, oranges. That's the URL that's going to help optimize for those specific products, okay? So if you do marketing events, if you do web design, it should be the name of your URL and then the URL for that specific product. Along with that, the title for that product and a short description for that specific product or service. Because those are the three that show up in that order. Title tag, URL, description for each search result that you're searching for. Okay? Number four, header tags. Header tags. Anyone know what header tags are? Yeah? H1 through H6. Which one's the most important? H1. H1. So any, anyone that's ever opened up a Word document, you have different headers. You have a header one, header two, header three, header four, header five, header six. And as you go down the line, they get smaller. Header one is the most important. Here's a trick. This is not so much a trick. It's a basic. What you have in your title tag is at least one to two of those headings should be in your H1. You can have more than one H1. You have an H1, H2 paragraph. H1, H2 paragraph. But your H1s should have the keywords for that specific product or service or solution that mimic some of your title tags. Some of those title tags should be in your description tag. Some of those title tags should be your URL. That's number four. Number five, internal linking. Internal linking. Anyone know what internal linking means? Linking from one page to another. Not within the menu, within the actual page, which in the actual content, the body of the website. 
The menu is obviously going to link to different pages. Internal linking, linking from page to page. So you might have on the Apple's page, you might have a link to the Orange's page. Directly within the body, internal linking. What you're doing is you're making the search engines understand that your website's important to you. You want to make it easy for your users to navigate throughout your website, to get to different places within the website very easily. Internal linking is one of the other. Six, so there are five basics of football. I gave you a cheat. There are five basics of NPR or SEO. Those are the five basics, okay? There are other things you can do, but those are the five basics. You better be doing those five if you even want to compete, okay? I'll throw in a bone. Have you ever had keywords that weren't working so well for you? That you're like, I'm doing well on this keyword. Why am I not doing well on this keyword? They're not even that far off. In your title tag, you might have apples, comma, oranges, comma, bananas. You're doing awesome on apples. Or you might not be doing that well on apples, but you're doing awesome on oranges, which is the second one. Flip them. Flip them. One thing about Google and the search engines are they were made by men. Men aren't that smart. <laughs> they're smart, but they're not that smart. One thing that you, they say that you should do to your website is to make it dynamic, to make it change often. So every time the crawlers come back, whether you set it every seven days or whether you set it every 14 days for it to reevaluate your site, you want something to be different, right? Okay? When you change those title tags, you've just made something different. Now, they don't really recognize that it's the exact same words, just in a different order. They just recognize there's something different in it. And they re-optimize it, and then they re-index it. And a lot of times, that keyword, or keyword phrase, comes up higher than what it did before. That's a trick. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> playbook. There's a playbook in football. When I went to the Raiders, they handed me a playbook that was about four inches deep. When I was in college, it was about an inch deep. This one was four inches deep. They had plays for plays. One thing that I can't understand is how um, Peyton Manning remembers all of those plays. I've heard that he calls his own plays. And he calls them and he changes them on the fly. He goes out there and he sees the, he sees the field. He recognizes they're in a different defense, calls a, calls a different play. And not only does Peyton Manning have to remember these plays, his players have to remember these plays. So I can't even imagine what their playbook looks like. There's a playbook. There's always a playbook in any level of football. Any level, there's always a playbook. And the same thing with SEO. There's always a playbook. For your website, for your company, you should always create some type of keyword, playbook, content strategy. Some type of keyword content strategy. Otherwise, you're just throwing anything out there. If you don't have any playbook in football, you're gonna say, okay, you do this and go out. You do this and go out. And half the time you forget what you just said. And it's the exact same thing with content and keyword strategy. Have some type of organization. Have a strategy for what you want to go after. Have a strategy. The coach always has his favorite plays. He always has his go-tos. And it might be five, it might be 10, it might be two. He always has his favorite plays. Have your favorite keywords that you want to go after. Have your favorite strategy that you want to go after. Your content that you want to push to the forefront. Film study. In college, in NFL, after every practice, after every game, we would study film, and let me tell you, I would fall asleep almost all the time. Because we would be in there anywhere from two to four hours at a time, and watching yourself play and mess up and get yelled at by the coach for that long sucks. 
and it's very boring. They turn the lights down really low, and all you see is a projector, and, and you say, coach can't see me, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go to sleep. And then you get yelled at, and your chair kicked, whatnot. This one guy fell out of his chair one time. It was hilarious. Film study. It's important, though. One thing I did take serious was when we were getting ready to play another opponent. I would always study their cornerbacks. I'd study their linebackers. I wanted to see if they were big enough to hurt me. I wanted to see what, what tendencies they had. You know, some cornerbacks will start turning their hip and you know they're getting ready to run. Those things are very important to understand. Understand when the, the safeties are starting to crouch up, you know there's gonna be a blitz. You understand your opponent. You study them. You study them. Same thing with SEO. Same thing with SEO. How many know or use Google Analytics? How many use Omniture? Anyone heard of Omniture? I use Google Analytics. I think it's probably the best uh, analytical software that you can have for your website, especially if you're optimizing for Google. It tells you everything you need to know. Everything you need to know. One thing a lot of people don't do is they say, oh, do you have Google Analytics? Oh, yeah, I got Google Analytics. How often do you look at it? <laughs> it's important. Why is Google Analytics important? Why is it important to see how many people are coming to your website? Why is it important to see who's coming to your website? Why is it important to see how they're getting to your website? Why is it important to see what websites are pushing to your website? How many people are, are use uh, ad buys on different websites? Don't you want to know if that is working or not? One thing that Google Analytics does provide with you is to see who's coming to your website, where they're coming from, what keywords they're typing. Now, if you don't know what keywords are working or what are not, you don't know how to optimize your website. Same thing with, with football. If you don't know what the defense is going to do before they do it, then you don't know what plays to call. Google Analytics will definitely help you, especially in SEO, to be able to optimize your website, to understand what keywords are working, what are not, what keywords you might need to flip, what keywords you might need to just pull out, what ad buys you might just say, you know what, this isn't working, I'm paying all this money this month, for nothing. Or you might, need to, you might be able to understand where you might need to put your ads. Google Analytics, very important. Sweat and blood. Obviously in football, there's sweat and blood. Sometimes it's tears. But obviously in football, there's a lot of sweat and a lot of blood. In SEO, there's a lot of sweat and a lot of blood. I've gotten many fights in the office. I'm just kidding. But in, in SEO, there is sweat and blood. <coughs> Your competition is coming at you just as hard as you might be going after them. I've noticed over the years that a lot of companies are starting to mimic other websites, mimicking their own competition. You'll go on your competitor's website and it'll look exactly like yours. And they're even, even starting to use some of the same keywords that you're using. They're starting to use the same colors that you're using. And it makes you want to go over there and say, why are you doing this? It's fair game. It's fair game. Sweat and blood. It's on both sides. Failure. Failure. Obviously, in my instance, I feel like I've failed in football. I made it to the NFL. A lot of people will say that's not failure. You made it, you at least made it. There are thousands of kids that could not say that. I still say it's failure, but at least I failed up. In SEO, there's failure. There have been several times, several times, where I've used keywords on a website. How many have been asked to optimize a website that just flat out sucks? <laughs> it just flat out sucks. And they don't want a website redesign, they just want to be on the first page of Google. And you can tell them, this website's not SEO friendly, it's not optimized, uh, you know, it's not gonna work. They say, I don't care, you're the expert. 
Well, I just told you that it's not going to work. <laughs> failure. You experience failure. But with failure, you also experience success. You also experience success because you learn how to succeed through your failure. On the NFL side, there's a Super Bowl. There's a Super Bowl. That's the highest level any player can reach. It's a Super Bowl. Like I said, Uncle Monty was been there twice. His team also failed twice. They lost both times. He still has a huge ring on his finger from the championship, but he still lost the Super Bowl. Many people wouldn't care if they lost, as long as they got there. I wouldn't care. I just want to be there in that atmosphere. Super Bowl is the highest level that any player, any platform, I mean, they're paying millions of dollars just to have a 30 second commercial play during the Super Bowl. It's pretty high up there. On the SEO side, how many have experienced optimizing your website for keywords, typing them in Google, and seeing them right there at the top? Your website. That is one of the best feelings ever for an SEO. For an SEO. It's one of the best feelings I've ever felt. When I typed in a keyword for a company that I might have optimized a website for, and they say, this is what we want to come up with, right there. And I've optimized that site, every page, all the content, title tags, description, and it takes a long time, guys. It's not easy. It's not easy. And that's why a lot of people fail to do it. Because it's not easy to go through every page and optimize it. But the reward is great. When you do it right, and when you see it on the first page of Google, especially on the top, the reward is great. So don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to fail. Michael Jordan said he failed many times, but that's why he succeeds. Thank you. All right. We have a few minutes for questions. Does anybody have a question for Jacob that they'd like to ask? A lot of information, some guy has a question. I, I have a question to ask you, Jacob. Yes. I'd like you to talk about the failure with your clients. Understand that we can fail with the things that we're doing, but how do you handle the client that says, I've got a website, I just want you to make it optimized, and you say, you need a whole website, but they don't want that. So how do you deal with that failure when they say, you can't do it? You know what, I gotta be honest with you. Um, a long time ago, when I had those types of clients, I did the optimization anyway, knowing that it was not gonna work. And that's the worst, is to put all your sweat and blood and time into a website, optimizing it, knowing that at the end, a couple weeks later, when the client's sending you an email, hey, I thought you said it was only gonna take a couple months, a couple weeks. And you, you diddle dally and you say, oh, you know, it'll probably take a little longer. And then you fail. And the client finally says, you know what? This isn't good. I want my money back. Or you said you were gonna do this, but it didn't work. So one thing that I've taken upon myself to do, and I'm not sure if anyone else will do this, but sometimes there's sacrifice that you have to make in order to succeed. So a lot of times when a client comes to me and they're not willing to pay for a website that they want to optimize, I put in the time. I put in the time and I just do it anyway. I do it anyway. Now whether I use a theme-based website that can easily be built, or whether I build it from scratch to make sure that that client is happy and successful because that's gonna help you in the long run. That's gonna help you in the long run. I've got a lot of players that I've played with that have asked me or said, Jake, you know, I can't make it anymore. I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna quit. I say, no, you can't quit. You can't quit. This is what you need to do. I did it. This is what you need to do. They say, no, I'm not gonna do that. I say, well, I'll do it with you. I'll do it with you. One of the guys asked me a little earlier, did I know who Dan LaFever was? Dan LaFever, anyone know who Dan LaFever is? He was a quarterback at, at the Central Michigan University. He played the years after I left. Um, they won back-to-back -back championships. 
under Brian Kelly and uh, Coach Butch Jones, and he went on to the NFL. He was one of the best quarterbacks to ever play at Central Michigan. Won multiple championships, great player. NFL, he's currently playing in the CFL. I went to a MAC championship game at Ford Field, and after the game, they won. His dad came up to me. I never talked to his dad. His dad came up to me and he says, Jacob, I just want to tell you. Dan came to me his freshman year, and he told me he was going to quit, but you talked to him. And now he's a senior, and he just won two back-to-back -back championships, and I just want to thank you. And there was no greater reward than to just hear those words, to know that my sacrifice that I didn't have to make helped a kid grow and eventually make it to the NFL and become a legend at our school. It's the same thing on your client side. Your client will look at you as a hero if you take the time, make the sacrifice. Now, I'm not saying give away websites. I'm not saying that. But sometimes you do have to bite the bullet. If you want that client to succeed, bite the bullet and help them in any way that you can. All right, let's give one more round of applause for Jay Cup. Jacob can stick around for a few minutes after the program, so if you'd like to come up and talk to him personally, you can. I know he's got his business card up here, and he'll be happy to share it with you. So this is the time of the, the presentation where we will pass the microphone around. Uh, if you could just stand up so that everyone can see you and hear you, and uh, give us your name if you have an ask or a want, uh, and please be sure to share it with us, and then pass it on. If you don't have to, you can pass the mic by if you don't want to talk. But we'll start right up here and work all the way around the room. Hi, my name is Justin Gibson. I help with a company in town called Aislink, and we are a services and software partner with Adobe and Woodwing, uh, typically working with companies either in the publishing industry or doing a lot of internal publishing. Hi, I'm Chelsea Coleman. I work for uh, Visual Compass Web Design and MC, and um, I'm currently a student at Eastern, and I actually went to Central too. So. Fire up chips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the director of the United Way Washington County. Two events that are coming, actually one event and one kind of ongoing May thing. Um, if you have kids, uh, we have something called Touch a Truck that we're doing with um, Success by Sixth Grade Start. And so it's going to be Ipsy High School this Saturday from 9 till 12. Little kids can climb on trucks, uh, fire engines. Uh, I'm sure HB will be there with ambulances. It's a lot of fun, so I would suggest you do that. And then also we do uh, May Days of Caring. We collect um, gently used, but for the most part, new things for babies that are we distribute through nonprofit organizations that will help young families that are really struggling with the cost of having a baby. So, contact me, United Way, UWWashna.org, or UWGive.org, and get more information on both of those. Hi, I'm Ryan Fidel with Beacon Hill Technologies. We're in IT staffing, and we do web development from the back end. Hi everybody, I'm Stacy from Dollarville, your local digital print shop, and I'm going to use part of yours and say we help you fail less because you get your jobs done so fast. Hi, I'm Bob Shannon. I'm a local CPA in the Ann Arbor area. I've got my own practice and I specialize in helping uh, clients with their accounting, administrative, and tax work. So I try and help you keep your accounts on track. Hi, I'm Tom. I have an ask this week. I'm looking for a mobile web developer with uh, e commerce mobile app. So, if you are an experienced or you're looking to start something, come see me. Hi, I'm Greg. I'm a local digital marketing and public relations freelancer. Hi, I'm Shane Torrey, and I'm currently a senior at Michigan State University interning with Nginx Digital over the summer. Hi, I'm, I'm Tom Trail. Um, I am a senior as well at Michigan State uh, studying advertising or advertising and public relations and um, I am also an intern at Nginx. Hi, I'm Derek DeRees uh, with Land Rivers and Associates. Hi, I'm Stacey Williams with the Architecture here in town. Hi, I'm Tom Tobin. I'm a senior of life and uh, trying to figure out how to market uh, our products. Uh, we're an automotive class company 
sold uh, specific products to specific uh, customers. Hi, I'm Dolores Brower, and I'm with a local law firm, Not Law, and I've recently been transitioned into the position to help them build their marketing and branding and all the other fun stuff. Hi, I'm Kathleen Stevens. I'm with the National Network of Compassion Centers, which is headquartered in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And we have 21 centers around the nation. And I'm here because I'm going to learn a little bit more about this because I'm, they've never had a marketing and development person all in one before. So, <clears throat> and also because one of the organizations that we're just about to think a deal with is the NFL Players Association, so I wanted to talk to you. <laughs> Sarah Nicoli. Uh, I own a uh, company that makes day planners here in town, and uh, I'm just wondering if my website is one of those websites that can't be helped no matter how good the SEO is. So I'm going to come talk to you. Good, good. <clears throat> I'm Bud Gibson. I uh, created the search marketing program at Eastern Michigan University, and I have an ask. Uh, we uh, work with nonprofit clients uh, to help them improve their positioning using. Uh, pay-per-click advertising. Uh, we've worked with some very notable ones in the area, including Ann Arbor Handsaw Museum, Arab American National Museum, and Charles A. Wright <coughs> Museum of African American History. We're always looking for new folks to work with and help succeed. Hi, I'm Jane Delancey of Delancey Design, and we do website development and graphic design. I'm Roger Rail. Uh, I'm a venture catalyst, so I help uh, a lot of the networking groups and startups in town. Uh, after you go to the Ipsy thing on Saturday, or even if you don't go to that, there's a Mini Maker Fair. Uh, Ann Arbor Mini Maker Fair is at uh, WCC, Washington Community College, Morris Lawrence Building, all day, pretty much from 10 till 6 or 5, something like that, on Saturday. Great thing for kids to, to and adults to. Uh, also, uh, uh, tonight I'll be at uh, Detroit New Tech, uh, where they, it's a startup uh, group, and uh, we'll be live streaming from there. Tim Brisley, I teach people the things that banks, insurance companies, and mortgage companies don't want people to know because they put them out of business. <laughs> and also looking for um, some interns or uh, individuals that uh, are, uh, have a genuine concern for people that want to work part-time. Hi, I'm Laura Kirchner with Ingenix Digital Marketing. I head up our client accounts, and um, great presentation. We do a lot with SEO, and um, definitely back everything you said, so <laughs> very good. And um, that little piece about content strategy is really what we focus on, how to create strategy, and then actually put it in motion to help businesses grow the way that they're looking to grow. Uh, oh, we do have one um, thing that we're looking to hire an account manager, so if you know anyone who's looking for that type of work, let me know. Thanks. Hi, I'm uh, Mary Lou with the LA2M. Um, we are looking for speakers for our season next year, so if you can recommend a, a great speaker, uh, we, uh, as you can see, the number of speakers that we get is very high, so we're looking for some really good speakers. Thank you, that was wonderful, by the way. Um, and also, uh, I'm a, a freelance content writer, so if you know someone who's looking for uh, someone who um, <coughs> does that kind of work, um, I'd be happy to talk to you. I'm Carter Schilling from Rock Pine Studios. I'm a commercial editorial and portrait designer for Patients at Shilby's Facebook page. All right, and again, I'm Jim Musial. I have a uh, small company called 5522 Tech, and I do uh, web and mobile design consulting. So, again, let's give our, a round of applause to Jacob. <laughs> take away some information from that because that certainly is uh, probably you heard something about one of your clients out there as he talked today. Um, so a couple quick things. want to thank everyone for being here today. want to thank all the people who volunteered their time to be here. Roger does with the video. Carter does with the photos. Um, check the check the uh, Alley 2 and Facebook page. Uh, the photos will usually be up there within a couple days so you can always uh, see some of the pictures. And I also want to introduce next week's speaker. We're going to have another phenomenal speaker here next week. His name is Dan Brady, and he is with the Lincoln Motor Company. Uh, he's going to be here talking about how Ford is reinventing the Lincoln, uh, uh, Lincoln brand, and has a lot to share with that. So 
Uh, it'll be a great time next week. So we, we thank you guys that were here for the first time today. We hope you come back again. Jacob's going to stay and, and talk if, you, if you'd like to come up and talk with him. He'll be here for a little bit. So otherwise, go out and, uh, and make this. And thanks for being here.